Why do people submit to authority? How is it that one man in a uniform can order another man to kill a person that they've never met and who's never done them any harm and have that order followed over and over and over again? This may seem like an extreme manifestation of obedience, one that you're unlikely to encounter outside of the military or the realm of politics, but the reality of the matter is that the psychological forces which compel people to obey are the same, regardless of the content of the orders given. Stanley Milgram, a psychologist from Yale University, wanted to understand these forces. Specifically, he wanted to know how it was that the German people were convinced to participate in the atrocities of World War II. Were these events due to some unique characteristic in German culture, or was there something else at play? In 1961, he performed a series of social experiments to find out. The experiments were set up as follows. Each test subject was brought into a waiting room where another person was sitting next to them. This other person was an actor. After a short wait, the actor and the test subject were greeted by a man in a white jacket, the kind typically worn by scientists and doctors at the time. The scientists would then explain to them that they were there to participate in an experiment to test whether punishment was an effective way of motivating people to learn. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn uh, various types of material. Uh, some of the better known theories are treated in the book over there, The Teaching Learning Process by Cantor. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. A common application to this theory would be when parents spank a child who does something wrong. But actually, we know very little about the effect of punishment on learning because almost no truly scientific studies have been made of it in human beings. Uh, for instance, we don't know how much punishment is best for learning. Now, we don't know how much difference it makes as to who's giving the punishment, whether an adult learns best from an older or a younger person himself, or anything of this sort. So what we're doing in the project is bringing together a number of adults of different occupations and ages, and we're asking some of them to be teachers and some to be learners. Uh, we want to find out just what effect different people have on each other as teachers and learners and also what effect uh, punishment will have on learning in this situation. They were then told that one of them would play the role of the learner while the other one would play the role of the teacher. The scientists chose the roles for each person and the actor was always chosen as the learner. Both the learner and the teacher were then shown two rooms. One with a device with multiple switches with voltages marked on each one and the other room containing a chair with shackles and a set of electrodes. The two individuals were then separated, and the actor was then supposedly shackled to the chair with the electrodes. However, unbeknownst to the real test subject, the electricity was not connected at all. The experiment was then started, and the test subject was ordered to ask a series of questions to the person in the other room through an intercom. Once the answer came back, if it was correct, they were to move on to the next question. If the answer was incorrect, they would flip a switch, administering the shock. Each time an incorrect answer was received, they were to move up to the next switch in the series thereby delivering a higher and higher voltage. Now each time he gives a wrong answer, you move up one switch on the shock generator. And it's important that you follow this procedure exactly, so to help you, uh, let me go through it again very quickly. The experiment began slowly with only mild yelps from the other room. Incorrect. I'll now get a shock of 75 volts. But very quickly as the voltage increased, the yelps turned into screams and requests to stop the experiment. Correct phrase is rich boy. The person that was supposedly receiving the shocks began to complain of a heart condition and begged to be released from the chair. Let me out of here, my heart's bothering me. Let me out, I tell you. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. You have no right to hold me here. The next phrase is fast. Let me out, let me out, let me out of here. Let me out. Bird, guard, train, plane. The real test subjects who were administering the shocks were, of course, disturbed by this. And they all turned to the so called scientists to express their doubts. These scientists merely responded by insisting that they must continue. Answer is bare. 240 volts. Next one, sweet. I did. Now you go back up to the beginning of that page and go through it again until he's learned them all correctly. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Do you mean I got to keep going up with the scale? No, sir. He's already there. I'm not going to get him 450 volts. The experiment requires you to I know continue. it does, but that man is hollering in there, sir. As I said before, although the shock may be painful, yeah, but not dangerous. I mean, he's, he's yelling in there. Start with blue, please, at the top of the page. Continue, please, teacher. Well, I thought we're going over it again. No, just, just go ahead. Blue. Boy. Girl. Grass. Hat. Correct. 
Nice. Day Sky Job Chair. Wrong. Answer is day. 285 volts. Continue, please. Fat. Man, lady, tub, neck. Answer, please. Wrong. Answer is neck. 300 volts. Continue. The next word is green, please. Green, grass, hat, pink, apple. Okay, if the learner doesn't answer in a reasonable time, about four or five seconds, consider the answer wrong and follow the same procedure you have been doing for wrong answers. Say wrong, tell them the number of votes, give them the punishment, read them the correct answer. Continue, please. Uh, green, grass, hat, ink, apple. Answer, please. Go on with the procedure, please, teacher. 315 volts, the answer is ink. As incredible as it may seem, for 50 to 65% of all those tested, just this assertion by the man wearing the white jacket was enough to make them continue administering the shock all the way up to the maximum 450 volts. Even after the person in the other room abruptly stopped screaming, which would imply that they were dead or unconscious. These experiments have been repeated over and over again using test subjects from all walks of life with virtually identical results. What this means is that more than half of the population would put a random person to death if they were ordered to by a complete stranger that seemed to be in charge. How on earth is this possible? What pushes people to ignore their own conscience and obey an obviously immoral order? The authority of the so-called scientist was based entirely on appearances. He was wearing a white jacket which signified his position. He gave firm and direct orders with no trace of hesitation or doubt, and he presented himself as part of a larger institution operating in an official capacity. This was his aura of authority. Governments and militaries use the same tools. Uniforms with special medals and insignias to give the appearance of rank and authority, dominant and self-assured speech when addressing subordinates, and an institutionalized chain of command which infers a sense of legitimacy to the position. Take all of this away and all you have is ordinary people telling other people what to do. That's all that's real. These trappings of authority are illusions designed to trick people into handing over their power. Unfortunately, the majority of the population is all too willing to fall for these illusions because it allows them to avoid responsibility for their actions. After all, no one can blame you. You were just following orders. If this is a message you feel the public needs to hear, then be sure to like, favorite, and share this video through as many avenues as possible. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering, on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website, stormcloudsgathering.com.